If you're looking for your first ever sewing project, or perhaps you're wanting to sew something with kids, then this is the tutorial for you. Welcome back to Country Cow Designs, I'm Jo, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this bag, which is, we call it the MFT, my first tote. This pattern comes in three sizes, so the three sizes kind of nestle into each other quite nicely. So this is the mini, this is the medium, and this one is the massive. This bag is really straightforward. I designed this pattern because my four-year-old niece wanted to sew with me. So I wanted something that she could actually do the sewing on. And she did, she did it brilliantly. It's really, really quick pattern to come together. So if you wanna sew along with me, you can purchase the pattern from our website. The sewing pattern is just two pounds and that includes all of the three sizes and all of the written instructions that you need but we've also got this video tutorial if you wanna watch and see what's involved before you make it. If this is your first time sewing, we have some extra resources for you. So we'll link a video for what a seam allowance is and also sewing terminology, what we mean when we say baste and things like that and top stitch. And if you're quite experienced in bag making, you might just enjoy this because it's really quick, it's really fun and they make great little gifts. If you visit our website, countrycowdesigns.com, you can grab a copy of the sewing pattern. You can also have a look at the tester photos. So our pattern testers have made loads of different examples of these, but I am gonna show you a couple more of mine. Here we go. So this is one of the massive ones. And then inside, we've got a couple that are slightly different just to show kind of the changes that you can make. So for this one, we fitted a magnetic snap and a couple of rivets. Super simple if you have the tools to fit that. There you go. And for this one, we've got lovely wax canvas with leather handles, which looks pretty brilliant. So all you're gonna need for this sewing project is inside and outside cotton fabrics, some webbing, some woven interfacing, and some fleece stabilizer, all of which you can obtain from your local sewing shop, but we will put links in the description for where you can find those things. And the pattern includes an extra page which shows different brand names depending where you are on the, in the world. If you're not already a subscriber to our YouTube channel, please subscribe, it really helps us out. Now we'll get started with the video and I hope you enjoy it. Step one is preparation. So for this step is just preparing your fabrics. So you need to cut them out using the cutting chart in the pattern. You need to have your two handles, which are made of webbing. You're gonna have two exterior panels, two pieces of fleece, which Thermalam is my favorite. It's a bit more dense than most, so that's a really nice one if it's available to you. And your two lining pieces. Now the lining and exterior are the same size and the fleece is gonna be an inch smaller on each side. Now. All the measurements for this are in the pattern, but this is gonna be similar for all of the sizes. So there's a mini, medium, and massive size, and we're gonna make the medium size for this video. Now, all of your cotton fabrics should be interfaced. So you can see here, I've got a woven medium weight interfacing on the wrong side of all of my fabrics. Step two is making the bag. So we're gonna have the handles, all of our fabrics, exterior lining, and fleece. The first thing that we're gonna do we need to cut squares out of the bottom edge on all of our panels. So make sure if you've got a directional print like me that you are doing this on the bottom edge. I find it easier to mark the fabric on the interfacing side. So I've marked my boxes. These are different sizes depending on the size bag you're making. So check the pattern, make sure that you're following the measurement shown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this square, these squares out on all of my panels. Once all your corners are cut out, you can just Put those in your scrap pile. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna fuse the stabilizer to the exterior panels. So flip them over this so that you're on the wrong side. And you just wanna make sure that your stabilizer is nice and centered and then fuse that in place. Once the stabilizer is fused, what you wanna do is flip your exterior panels over and we're gonna mark them in from each edge. And this is gonna help us place the handles. Now, depending on the size you have, again, you need, you need to refer to the pattern for the right size to make sure that your measurement is, is in there correctly. So we're gonna grab one of the handles and if you're using nylon webbing, I find that using a lighter on the edge of the webbing stops it from fraying like this. 
So I generally find that's a really good thing to do. It just kind of melts the end of it. Okay, so we're going to place the handle and you're going to find the marks that you made and line it up against so that it's on the inside of that mark. This overhang here, you want to be two inches. Make sure it's the same on each side and then just clip that in place. The overhang on these handles is important. It adds strength to the handles and makes sure that they'll be nice and durable. So now what we're going to do is baste that in place. Before you do so, just check that your handle is sitting like this and that it's not got a twist in it. Repeat that so that both of your exterior panels have the handles basted. This is just a temporary stitch, so you don't need to backstitch a lot on it or anything like that. All right, we're gonna place these exteriors right sides together. We're gonna to line up all the edges and clip them together. Now these two panels are clipped together, we're gonna to sew the sides and we're also gonna sew the bottom using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And make sure that you're backstitching well at the beginning and the end. Unless stated otherwise, I'm using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance for the sewing in this pattern. And I'm using a two and a half millimeter stitch length for most of the seams. Now that's sewn, I'm gonna take this over to the ironing board and what I'm gonna do is Press the seams open. This is gonna give the bag a neater finish when it's done. So I'm gonna do this on the sides and on the bottom. If you have an ironing board that you can put something on the end of, that will make it easier for doing the sides, but pressing this bottom seam open is gonna be a little bit more tricky. Now the seams are pressed open, I'm gonna bring the box corners together. So these corners that we left unsewn, you wanna bring the side seam to meet, meet the bottom seam. So make sure they're matched up perfectly and clip those together. And then the rest of the box corner should just fit together like that. And you just want to put some more clips on there. If you add a couple of clips further down, this will make it even easier to sew the box corner. So we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew that edge. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the box corner on the other side. Try to keep the seams flat when you're sewing the box corners. This will give the bag a neater finish. When both of your box corners are sewn, you can set the exterior aside. Grab your two lining pieces. We're gonna place them right sides together. And on one of them, you wanna mark one inch down from the top on each side. Then we're just gonna clip these together. Once your lining panels are clipped together, we're gonna to sew the sides and the bottom like we did on the exterior. However, we want the lining to be slightly smaller so it fits neatly inside the bag. So when we reach this one inch mark, we're gonna increase the seam allowance. So we're gonna start with 3 eighths of an inch, and then when we reach the mark, we're gonna slowly increase it to half an inch all the way down. Then we use half an inch seam allowance along the bottom and half an inch seam allowance up here decreasing it to 3 eighths when we reach the line. We need this top section to be 3 eighths of an inch so that it fits at the top and we can sew the exterior and lining together successfully. We're now going to take this over to the iron and press the side and base seams open. We're doing the same thing here as we did with the exterior. So you're going to bring the base seam and the side seam together, make sure they're matching up neatly and clip together. The rest of the box corner should just fall neatly into place and you want to clip that the rest of the way. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew this with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, I know we used a larger seam allowance on the sides and the base, but we are definitely using 3 8 of an inch here to make sure that the lining doesn't end up uh, being bigger. If you use a larger seam allowance, you're actually gonna make these box corners too big to fit into the exterior. Both of the box corners on your lining need to be sewn. So now we're gonna grab the exterior and we need to leave a turning gap. So 
There's a measurement in the pattern. It depends which size bag you're making, but you want to check the measurement for the turning gap. It's gonna be just on the inside of these handles. So we'll mark that first. And then we're ready to put these two together. So you want to have your exterior right sides in, as it is right now. Turn your lining so that it's right sides out. And place it into the exterior. So they're now right sides together. You wanna to match up these side seams at the top here and then clip them together. Then we're gonna clip the rest of this top edge together. Now we're gonna sew this top edge, but we're gonna use a half inch seam allowance because the larger seam allowance is gonna make it easier when we close the turning gap. Now what you need to do is start at one of these turning gap marks and we're gonna come down from the top to half an inch and then, and then go around. Then when you come back to this one, we're gonna go up. By sewing up and creating like a corner here, it's gonna give it a much neater finish when we turn it out. If you're worried about struggling with the half inch seam allowance, you can just mark it and it should actually be in line with the stabilizer. So what you should be able to do is sew down and then follow the stabilizer around the entire top edge. Make sure you backstitch really well on the beginning and end. If you're using a flatbed machine, you'll probably find it easier to sew um, with the lining side up, in which case you might wanna mark the turning gap on the lining as well. Okay, so that is sewn on the top edge. Now we've got this turning gap and what we're gonna do is just reach in, grab the exterior and pull it out. Now this is why you need to make sure that you've backstitched well because otherwise as you pull this through you will have a problem with your stitching coming undone. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that we push like the box corners out nice and neat on the exterior, first of all. And then what you can do is push the lining in. So you can see here that your seams are kind of messy on the top. We wanna get a nice neat finish. So you can reach in through the turning gap and kind of push the seams to get a neat finish. Or you may prefer to just kind of roll the seams between your fingers, whatever works for you. You wanna get a flat seam here. And you wanna do that around the whole of the bag. Okay, so when we reach this turning gap, it should kind of naturally fold in. What we want is for the exterior and the lining to both be folded in equally and to have a nice neat finish. So I'm gonna take this over to the iron. I'm gonna press it to make sure that it's even. I'm gonna press the top of this edge as well to just get it to sit really neat and flat. So don't rush that step. When you press it, you wanna make sure that it's looking really neat from the outside. You don't wanna have like the lining creeping up and that is gonna make a difference to how it looks. So now I'm gonna grab some fabric glue and I'm just gonna use a tiny bit and I'm gonna use it to hold this turning gap closed. This means it won't move around when we're sewing it. So I'm gonna put a few clips on. I'm also gonna clip the rest of this top edge. I'm gonna make sure that the lining isn't showing from the 
outside. So if anything, you actually want the lining to be a little bit lower than the exterior, but basically you just don't want to be seeing the lining cropping up when you're looking at the bag from the outside. Now we're ready to top stitch the bag. I'm going to start at my turning gap. So I'm going to start sort of near the handle here and I'm going to go all the way around back stitching at the beginning and the end. As you do this, make sure that your handles are up. So they're getting, they are getting caught in this top stitch, but if they're down, then you're going to have a big problem. You want to make sure that they're up as you sew around the top of the bag. If you're using a flatbed sewing machine, then sewing this with the lining side up is going to be much easier. However, if you have a normal domestic or a tabletop machine, usually you can take it off and you can put the bag around the arm of the machine. That will make it much easier to stop top stitch it from the exterior and that usually will give you a slightly neater finish. So the final step is to take this over to the iron again and we're going to give it a really good press, make sure that the lining is nice and snug in there. Um, give everything a good press so that your bag looks as good as it can. So there is our finished bag. Looks pretty good, I think. I like the uh, fabric and tan webbing handle coordination. So if you've enjoyed this, we have more intricate sewing patterns if you're up for a challenge on our website, countrycowdesigns.com, or we'll link a free tutorial for another really beginner friendly bag pattern. So that's the video for today. We do have another pattern release coming up soon, but it's part of the Bag of the Month Club, so we don't get to show you what that bag is quite yet. But we have lots of bag patterns planned over the coming months, so make sure you're subscribed, and I hope that you'll be joining us again soon. Bye.